this film, we'll be discussing two unique new transfer cases, the Model 119 and Model 219 full-time cases. Externally, these cases appear to be identical, but as we'll see shortly, there are several internal design differences between them. Both cases provide full-time differentiated operation and a torque biasing feature, which assures that the driving axle with the available traction receives the most drive torque. In our discussion of these transfer cases, we'll look at these areas. First, we'll identify model applications. Then we'll study the design similarities and differences between the two units. Finally, we'll look briefly at the towing procedures required to tow vehicles equipped with these cases. The bench chart that accompanies this film contains step-by-step -step disassembly and reassembly procedures. The chart is a handy reference source you can use whenever you're servicing a 119 or 219 case. As far as model applications go, these two cases are really unique. As we've said, both utilize the same basic design, but one has been adapted for use in Jeep vehicles, while the other is used in the revolutionary new Eagle, which is the first American four-wheel drive passenger car to be sold in the United States. All Eagle models use the 119 transfer case, which provides one range. Because it is a full-time single range transfer case, the 119 has no external levers. Additionally, all Eagles are equipped with automatic transmissions. So Eagle models are as simple to drive as any other passenger car, a feature that appeals to many drivers who are considering entering the world of four-wheel drive. The 219, however, is an option offered on some Jeeps. Like the 119, the 219 is also a full-time transfer case used with automatic transmissions. But the 219 offers Jeep drivers more ranges. The 219 provides four ranges, four low, neutral, four high, and lock. As you can see, the driver uses a floor-mounted shifter lever to select the desired range. In a minute, we'll discuss each of these ranges and when they're used. But first, let's look at the design similarities and differences between these two transfer cases. As we've said, both cases use the same basic design but the 219 has some additional components needed to provide Jeep drivers with four ranges. Here's a cutaway view of the 119 case. As you can see, this unit features a drive chain and differential pinion gears. The drive chain drives a sprocket for the front axle only. A viscous coupling is used here to provide the case's torque biasing capabilities. Let's just take a minute at this point to discuss the reason why a differential and viscous coupling are necessary in these full-time transfer cases. This illustration reveals an important point regarding cornering maneuvers. As you can see, when a vehicle goes around a corner, the front wheels track a larger arc than the rear wheels. Therefore, on a four-wheel drive vehicle, the front prop shaft has to make more revolutions than the rear prop shaft. On dry pavement, this difference in prop shaft speeds results in a condition known as prop shaft windup. This windup effect obviously puts excessive stress on the prop shaft and transfer case components. In vehicles equipped with part-time cases, drivers avoid this condition by shifting into two-wheel drive on dry pavement. In the 119 and 219 cases, an inter-axle differential allows the prop shafts to rotate at different speeds without creating prop shaft windup when a turn is negotiated. This differential action can be compared to an ordinary axle differential, which allows two wheels to rotate at different speeds. But with this type of differential, you can see how a slipping wheel would receive all the drive torque. The front axle, which has the available traction, would receive no drive torque. This brings us to the important function of the viscous coupling, which prevents this situation from occurring. In both the 119 and the 219, the viscous coupling is the key component. The coupling consists of a drum, a drum cover, a drum cover retaining ring, 43 individual clutch plates, and a hub. The coupling is filled with a silicone fluid that has the consistency of honey. The coupling is a sealed unit, which is serviced as an assembly only. We've disassembled this one strictly for photographic purposes. Some of the clutch plates are splined to the front output shaft, while the others are splined to the rear output shaft. The front output shaft plates mesh with the hub's external splines. The rear output shaft plates mesh with the drum's internal splines. 
The front and rear plates are alternately stacked close together, and all of them are immersed in the silicone fluid. Let's see how the viscous coupling and the other case components transfer the drive torque. Here's how the case functions when the vehicle is driven straight ahead on a surface providing good traction to all wheels. The drive torque flows from the input shaft to the viscous coupling and differential assembly. All of the viscous coupling and differential components rotate as a unit because no turns are being negotiated and traction conditions are equal at both drive axles. Equal drive torque is supplied to both drive axles. Here's how the viscous coupling provides drive torque to an axle with available traction, even though the other axle is spinning. Here, the rear wheels are spinning. The spinning rear wheels try to force the drum's clutch plates through the thick silicone fluid. This causes the coupling's rotational speed to increase, and the plates are forced to shear through the fluid at even higher speeds. As the plates cut through the fluid, the fluid expands, creating friction between the plates and the fluid. If you've ever walked through waist-high water, you can understand the principle behind the viscous coupling. If you walk slowly, your effort and the resistance you encounter are both relatively low. This can be compared to the viscous coupling action when the vehicle is turning a corner. The clutch plates are moving through the fluid at a slow speed, and thus don't encounter much resistance. But when you try to run through the water, you encounter more resistance. In the viscous coupling, the more an axle spins, the more resistance is encountered. Now, let's check out the differences between the 119 and the 219, which is shown here. As you can see here, most of the components are the same. But the 219 contains a planetary assembly, which provides Jeep drivers with a reduction feature. In its four high range, the 219 functions exactly like the Eagle's 119 unit. In most driving situations, Jeep drivers will leave the case in this range. Here's how the 219 functions when the case is in the 4 high range and the vehicle is being driven straight ahead. The drive torque flows directly into the viscous coupling and differential unit, just as it does in the 119. And if one axle loses traction, the 219's viscous coupling makes sure that the other axle receives drive torque. This, too, is the same function we saw in the 119. This illustration depicts the 219's reduction components. Here, the case is still in its four-high mode. As we just saw, the drive torque passes right through the reduction assembly in this mode. But before we get into the other ranges, we should identify these components which are not used in the 119. These are an annulus gear, a planetary assembly, and a range fork. The 219's four low range offers the Jeep driver additional pulling power for situations like this. In this range, the reduction components play an important role in the power flow. When the case is shifted into the four low range, a couple of things happen to the reduction components. The annulus gear is moved forward by the range fork into engagement with a fixed lock plate, which is attached to the case. Now the annulus gear cannot rotate, and the planetary pinions are forced to rotate around the internal teeth of the annulus gear. This creates a 2.6 to 1 reduction ratio. Here's the other internal shift that occurs when the case is shifted into 4 low. The mode fork moves the clutch sleeve forward until the clutch sleeve engages with the main shaft. This has the effect of locking all these components together. The main shaft, drive sprocket, side gear, and viscous coupling. Now the differential is bypassed, and the front and rear drive axles each receive an equal amount of drive torque, no matter what the traction conditions may be. The 219's lock position is also used for specific situations. This range is used when the vehicle becomes high-centered, as it is here, or when a prop shaft becomes inoperable. In the lock range, the clutch sleeve locks the main shaft, drive sprocket, side gear, and viscous coupling together. This is the same action we saw in the four low range. But in the lock range, the annulus gear remains in its rearward position. It is not engaged with the lock plate, so no reduction is created. 
Towing procedures for Eagle models are somewhat different from those used on Jeep vehicles equipped with the 219 case. Let's start with the Eagle. If you have occasion to tow an Eagle with the front wheels raised, follow this procedure. Place the transmission selector lever in neutral. Be sure the parking brake is released. Then, either remove the rear prop shaft or place the rear wheels on a dolly. If you tow an Eagle with the rear wheels raised, use this procedure. Place the transmission in neutral and be sure the parking brake is released. Then, either remove the front prop shaft or place the front wheels on a dolly. For recreational purposes, Eagles may be towed with all four wheels on the ground. In this situation, be sure to remove both prop shafts. However, the transmission, transfer case, and axles must be in good operating condition. If any of these conditions aren't met, the front or rear wheels must be raised. Now, let's look at towing procedures for vehicles equipped with a 219 case. These vehicles may be towed with the front wheels off the ground with no mileage or speed limitations. Simply place the transmission in park and the transfer case in neutral. Remember, though, it is extremely important that you put the transmission in park. Vehicles equipped with a 219 case can also be towed with the rear wheels raised with no mileage or speed limitation. Again, place the transmission in park and the transfer case in neutral. It is also extremely important that you put the transmission in park in this situation. Vehicles equipped with 219 cases can be towed with all four wheels on the ground with no distance or speed limitations. If you ever have occasion to tow one of these vehicles with all four wheels on the ground, simply put the transmission in park and the transfer case in neutral. Now that we've discussed these new transfer cases, see if you can answer a few questions. Number one, the 119 and 219 transfer cases are both full-time units that utilize a viscous coupling. This statement is A, true, or B, false. Number two, the 219 is an option on Eagle models. Is this statement A, true, or B, false? Number three, for recreational purposes, vehicles equipped with the blank case can be towed with both prop shafts connected. Which is correct, A, the 119, or B, the 219? The answer to number one is A, true. Both transfer cases are full-time units and utilize a viscous coupling. Number two is B, false. The 219 is available on Jeep vehicles only. The 119 is the only case used in Eagles. The answer to number three is B, the 219. As we've said, Jeep vehicles equipped with the 219 are capable of being towed behind recreational vehicles with both prop shafts connected. Remember, the transfer case must be in neutral and the transmission must be in park. Eagles, which are equipped with the 119, can be towed for long distances for recreational purposes. However, both prop shafts must be disconnected. We haven't addressed service procedures for the 119 and 219 transfer cases in this film, but the bench chart that accompanies this film provides all of the disassembly and reassembly procedures needed to service these units. Also, be sure to attend the AMC Jeep Service Training School on AMC Jeep transfer cases when the school is held in your area. Complete service information and specifications pertaining to the 119 are contained in the 1980 AMC Technical Service Manual. Information on the 219 is included in the Jeep Manual.